Hey everybody, it's Amy Fox with Work in Progress Texas, and I am super, super excited to interview a special guest, my fellow coach Lois. I know her as L. Dot Faye Nutrition on Instagram, and I'll make sure that I post her her information below in the comments. But her and I met through Nutri Nutrition Coaching Institute, and we were able to actually meet in person at Nutrition Coaching Summit back in November, and have been staying in contact ever since. And I've been so happy to, for her friendship. It's really great to have fellow coaches that you can support and lean on and brainstorm with. And the reason that I brought her on was because I was doing research for Tuesday's Facebook Live, which is going to be all on. On fad diets. And I was doing a lot of research and refreshing myself on diets. Cause when I say that I've tried every single diet, I have tried every single diet. This was one of the diets that I did attempt a couple of years ago before our wedding. And I'll go maybe into more detail there, but it was my number, probably my top three most hated diets. And so I wanted to prevent bias from my opinion, but also take a stand where it makes sense. So that's why I wanted to interview somebody who not only tried the diet, lived the diet, but she also sold the diet. And we wanted to kind of dig into what it is, how it worked, and why um, her career path changed a little bit more recently. So Lois, thank you so much for taking some time with me tonight. I really, really appreciate you blocking out. I know people's schedules are busy, so I'm honored. <laughs> no problem. I figure you just give us a little bit of your origin story, a little background on you and your coaching journey of where it started and where it's evolved to. Yeah, of course. So I started as a teacher, like uh, 30 years ago <laughs> and taught for a while. Then my husband started working for the state department. So we moved overseas. We lived overseas for 15 years, uh, different countries. And eventually it came time. And I did, didn't have to work. I actually owned a bakery. Um, I made like healthy snacks, sold all that stuff at the embassy and in the community. Um, and then I kind of took a shift. I realized I wasn't really making any money. That was more of a hobby. And, um, I had kids who were getting ready for college and I thought I gotta, I gotta make some money <laughs> so that they can go. So I started just thinking, what could I do? Um, I've always been super active. I've always worked out. I've always, you know, been pretty conscious of my weight. Um, and I was running half marathons. I ended up getting injured and someone ran a half marathon for me. Turned out that he was a coach with Optavia. And I just, I don't know anything about Optavia. That's when it was take shape for life. Before that was Metafast. So it's kind of had some iterations. It's still owned by Metafast. Um, but I was just watching. And one day his wife posted something and said, we can send our kids to private school because of being health coaches with Optavia. And I thought, oh, well, tuition. I have to pay college tuition and they're sending their kids to private school. So this must be a good fit. I didn't know anything about the company at all, but I could do it when I lived overseas. It was totally portable. Um, I started doing that. And so I started coaching Optavia, which I did in Greece and I did in Peru. I did when we lived in Virginia and then I had a shift and I stopped. Now we live in Arizona, husband, two dogs, and two mini adults who don't live with us. <laughs> that is fantastic. Okay. So the, so now where are you at? Like, as far as what are you doing in your day to day on your coaching now that that has ended? So I stopped Optavia um, officially a year ago, November, and I in I had kind of known for about six months that I was going to leave Optavia, but I had made some promises to some people that I felt I had to, you know, I couldn't I couldn't undo those promises. So um, in that time though, from when I decided I was leaving until November, I did the certification process. I worked with my three clients. And I got certified. And so then I opened my own business in November. And since then I've coached a little over a hundred women um, with, you know, doing the same coaching that you do, where we really take people through a very sustainable <laughs> process without any processed foods uh, that they have to buy from somewhere else. Um, and just seeing great results with that. Amazing. But that's yeah. amazing. And what an amazing roster already. A hundred clients. Wow. Goals. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have another job. <laughs> this is it. Thank you. Thank you for that, Grace. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, awesome. That's why it's always great to get inspiration from other fellow coaches. So I love that. So I alluded to that 
Optavia, which I was always pronouncing it wrong. I was saying Octavia back in the day, <laughs> but I actually had experience with it as well. I had experience when it was MediFast, or if I'm saying that wrong too, maybe. <laughs> and I think what caught my attention about it was part of our origin story is that we gained about 40 pounds each, my husband and I, when we started dating. And I don't even have wedding photos up because I hate them so much because it was the heaviest either of us had ever been. And of course, they caught my attention when I reached out to somebody around September time frame because my wedding was in November. November, oh. this, <laughs> this promise of losing 20 pounds by November, right. you know, that that was kind of the, the pitch or whatever. So obviously it caught my attention. And then I received my shipment of stuff. Cause I was like, great, 20 pounds. Awesome. Let's do it. <laughs> I'll and do anything. I was, it was, I would, I was like, how am I trying to rush like a year and a half of poor choices into two months? That was silly. But when I tasted the stuff, I was like, this is disgusting. I was like, how can I survive on this for two months plus or whatever? So can you describe like the process of the plan, you know, and, and how it works so that people understand like what I'm referencing? Right. So um, when somebody comes into the program and we did do like a health assessment, right. But I mean, there was nobody that we ever said, I don't think this will work for you unless they were like, I'm allergic to soy and I'm allergic to wheat and I'm allergic to gluten and I'm allergic to dairy. Then we were like, well, nothing I sell. You can't eat anything I sell. Everybody else, we sold the program. It was, I don't know if it's gone up, but it was $420 a month for the first month. And then it went up from there that if the next month was going to be more expensive than that, um, you get a box on your doorstep of all processed foods. Um, there are a lot of them, but a lot of variety, I guess, but, uh, you eat five of those a day and each one has about 100 calories. Some have less, some have a little bit more. So you're eating five of those. So 500 calories is your base. And then you get one lean and green meal a day, which is four ounces of protein and one and a half cups of vegetables. So the whole thing, if you do it exactly correctly, is 800 to 1,000 calories. And 1,000 calories would be if you ate the eight nuts that you're allowed as a snack. <laughs> um, the, the snacks are gum, like one piece of gum, three celery sticks, a pickle, um, eight nuts, or sugar-free jello. Those are your five optional snacks. And we would tell people, if you don't need the snack, don't eat it. Um, and the, so it's very low carb. So people were going into ketosis. Um, so, I mean, your hunger is a little bit mediated, right? When you're on keto, but it didn't matter if you were a 150 pound woman who wanted to lose 10 pounds, or if you were a 300 pound man who needed to lose 150 pounds or hundred pounds, you still ate 800 to a thousand calories. And so, as you can imagine it, I mean, if you ate 800 calories today of anything, you would lose weight. <laughs> um, so that's how it worked. And then, but the, the piece of it that always kind of frustrated me is that there was never, ever, ever a plan to get you off Optavia. Um, they say there's a plan, but they never coached the coaches. Like I coached for seven years. They never once said, this is how you get someone completely off of Optavia. And that's why people who do it in general mm -hmm. gain their weight back. There is, to be fair, a small, there's a, a component, a lifestyle book, which you probably got maybe when you ordered yours, where it's called the life book. And the goal truly is for you to start changing your habits. But nobody who wants to lose 20 pounds in two months is about to like start doing all the things, <laughs> right? Right, right. That, and that's a good point that I think one of the things, if I was to give a positive spin on the program itself, is that obviously there is a community base. So there's encouragement. There's there's a it's obviously a network marketing company. So they they do have things in place. I mean, I was a part of Beachbody, for example. So certainly I'm used to Shakeology being a popular shake alongside with workout programs or their ultimate more ultimate portion of fix and to be mindset, which actually to be mindset, I probably don't have any issues with. And those are things I'll touch on Tuesday, but I think if I was to get any positive spin, there's definitely a community, there's support. But when I was in the Facebook groups, there would be posts of like some concerning questions that would get deleted or yes. just seeing people really, really struggle. 
And I'm, from my understanding too, most of these coaches are really just people that have done the program and are just helping people with the program. They're not necessarily certified health coaches or personal right. trainers or whatever. Yep. Right. Yeah. So, so everybody has to do the program, but I didn't have any weight to lose. So I did it for five days just because that's their rule. You have to do it. I, I'm the anomaly. I came into it to make money. Most people have like done the program. Um, but yeah. And then there is a certification process, but you can only be certified through their certification process. If you're not an Optavia coach, that certification isn't available to you. And basically you just have the, the life book open on your lap and you're answering questions out of the life book. So yeah. That's the, that's the training, but nothing about carbs, fat, protein, how it works, what being such low calorie could do to a person in terms of digestion and stress and sleep and all of that. Uh -huh. So that leads into kind of like, what was your ultimate reason for waking up, you know, and kind of being like, this is just not either. No, if you went in to make money, it's actually a great person to ask the question because you technically already had a physical result, maybe that you were content with or something. So what was like that deciding factor of like, I need to be out of this. Um, I was making a lot of money. So it was a hard decision in terms of that to give up that income. Um, because MLMs, as you know, if you put in the work, right, you like, you can make a lot of money. True. Um, so that was hard, but my mom had Alzheimer's and I started doing research about Alzheimer's because it's, we have a very long family history of it. And so I basically started thinking like, how can I not have this disease? And everything led back to nutrition and how all of your foods should be, you know, mostly whole foods. They come from the ground, you, or they were an animal that was eating food from the ground, not, um, 85% processed food, which Optavia was. And they would say, we are 85% of your diet and it is all extremely ultra processed. Um, and so I was like, oh my gosh, I gotta, I gotta stop this right now. Um, and so that was kind of just the beginning of my, you know, like nosedive into nutrition um, and getting myself out of Optavia, just like realizing that it was such a negative, like health-wise, there's no benefits to eating that much processed food and that such low calories. Um, so that was definitely part of it. The part where I had mentioned before, where um, there was no way to get people off of Optavia. And then finally, I like looked at my roster of um, clients. I had about 65, I think about that time that I was working with all at one time. So that should say something about the level of support that they were getting. We were told literally that our check-ins should not last longer than four minutes. Wow. So basically you're on the program, right? Or you're off the program. There's no middle of the road. You're eating all five of your fuelings and you're eating your lean and green and you're seeing success because you will, if you're only eating 800 calories or you are failing because you've decided to have a piece of cake at your kid's birthday party, or you went to a wedding or whatever. Um, so that was part of it. And then the final part was just that out of my 65 clients, I think that I had maybe five who were really like doing the whole program where it was like, oh my gosh, I have never like made walking a priority. I've never made drinking water a priority, sleep. like. <laughs> and I thought that is a horrible percentage of successful people who still will gain all their weight back when they stop Optavia, even with all of their lifestyle changes. And so that was kind of like the final nail in the coffin was what am I, what am I doing? I'm really just making money and having people eat processed food. And it just kind of, started to have a really sour taste for me. Mm, yeah. That's, I mean, that just shows that your you know, character when it comes down to it. I know we, we can say, we can, obviously, I want people to know who work in this field. Cause I do have friends that sell it is, is a matter of like, trust me, it's really not a personal attack. It's more so like really kind of going on to the science, the concern of your basal metabolic rate being impacted by low calorie foods, like low calorie diets in general. And I'm talking like HCG diet, cabbage soup, like whatever, because you're basically adjusting your, your um, maintenance calories because your body's just going to try to protect itself and go into protection mode. Right. Um, 
And that's just what it's just to me, it was one of those diets where I was like, I, I want to take a stand because they're growing and really it's successful. And yes. it's January. So of course, people are looking for options too. So it, to me, it just makes me nervous that it's like, you know, like, I mean, we could comment on the lawsuit that they have, but it's like, take a lawsuit with a grain of, of salt or whatever. Right. right. Because all it was is like, what kind of claims are you making? Now I can see, like, did they ever talk about in the history of how it came about? Was it like originally in maybe obesity clinics, getting people ready for bariatric surgery? Like, is that kind of, do you think that's where these meal plans kind of started? That's my guess before Google. Yeah. Anything. So it, um, it did start like as a weight loss program. It was only the five fuelings. That's it. So it was a 500 calorie prescription diet. Wow. And the founder of Optavia, he was a board certified. I mean, this almost makes me sick because he was a doctor and he's still doing this board certified ER physician. Like there were only like at the time, 10 of them in the world. And he was one of them. And he was like, these people will never be successful if they don't have support because basically the doctor would write the prescription, they would eat the food, but there was no follow-up of any kind. So he added the lean and green, he added the lifestyle part and he added coaches. Um, and so I think, you know, like the, the basis of it, I do feel like was well-intentioned, like let's take something that's kind of successful ish, make it better, give people support, show them how to live better but it is still a terrible diet. <laughs> like yeah. even that, even with support, even with support from unqualified people. Um, I mean, it's, it's better than it was, but it's 85%, like, as you said, terrible, terrible mm -hmm. food. Mm -hmm. And it led to, I saw over and over and over with my clients where they could stay, you know, on the program for maybe a week, two weeks, even 30 days, right? Because I always say you can do anything for 30 days. You can stand on your head for 30 days, right? Willpower and all that. But as soon as something came up, they could never get back to the same level of commitment that they had because that, it's that whole binge and restrict thing would start then. Mm -hmm. um, and I just saw it over and over and over again. And so, so many of my phone calls would just be like, okay, just start again. <laughs> and hmm. That was, you know, the basic thing, which we never say that to a client, right? We're like, just do the next right thing. Like whenever you didn't fail, you didn't, you know, let's just learn from whatever happened and move on. But that's not what we told our clients. It was, it was their fault if they did not eat their five fuelings and weigh and measure every single thing that went into their mouth. Yeah. And I feel like it's, I was listening to one of Mike Milner's recent podcasts too, about, I know he did something on this plan in, in particular, yeah. and also just talking about how so many diet plans out there don't change behaviors. It's literally like you're following a program and, and that's why diets can be successful. That's why they have so many wonderful before and after pictures, which I think one of the other things that frustrates me is the before and after pictures are like a database that you can access as opposed to who you actually individually helped. Right. Yeah. Yep. You right. can put up anybody's before and after picture. Sure. And to me, it's kind of like, what's the follow-up to like, I'm wondering like how many of those people are showing up to the, to the, uh, conventions or whatever, still successful. Is that accurate? Like, is that being tracked like long-term? Cause you think about the biggest loser situation, how they put them in extreme situations and how they gained all the weight back. And that's right. the last thing you want, especially when you're trying to fight an obesity epidemic. That's like our country's only gotten more unhealthy, the more diets that are out there. Exactly. <laughs> So frustrating. Yeah. I see like some of my, um, you know, coaches that are still coaching Optavia and they're using before and after pictures that I was using seven or eight years ago. Um, I don't know what those people, there's no way to track those people. Um, yeah. and I think what's the hard part for me too, is seeing the, the coaches of the people that I know, like, again, I know this is going to offend somebody or, and I just want to say too, if there's anybody out there who believes in this program and wants to come on and be interviewed and defend and talk about it, I, my door is open. I would love to have a civil discussion, even if I disagree and we can just agree to disagree, but it's sad for me to see other coaches be like, I just started the program again and dropped seven pounds. And it's kind of like, well, if you keep going back to a diet, then it doesn't work. 
right? Yeah. Like if it's not to say that we don't gain weight in our life with circumstances or life throwing us a bunch of curveballs. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. Believe me, I've had my own fluctuations, but it's nice to know that I'm not going back on a plan. I'm just, you know, going back to those behaviors that, in, you know, created success. Exactly. Exactly. There was something that you were saying that I wanted to comment on. Um, well, one thing is that there's a whole, like coaches are supposed to stay on Optavia as well, hmm. which is definitely problematic. <laughs> but, um, you know, they tell you like, we expect you to spend this much money every month on Optavia as a coach. And then they would say like, but you don't have to, you know, like it's not a requirement, but they would say it in every training. Um, but I, I also think, you know, the negative comments on the Facebook support pages. Yeah. Cause I was an admin for a while and anybody who said anything negative, their report, their comment was taken down mm -hmm. there. Yeah. There was one time I, I know I was in the middle of commenting on somebody because it was like a, a kidney issue or something like that. And then all of a sudden it disappeared, which was unfortunate. Um, I know, I think I saw something recently too, where they, like you talked about how there is somewhat of a plan to get off of it, but they're still expecting you to be on it. And then also the cost of it. I mean, we can't deny that it's expensive. And I can even say as health coaches and a personal trainer with our business, like we're not even charging per month, what Optavia costs per month, right? Like maybe someday we will, because our value is there. I'm not going to exactly. decline that because right. I know that we can, you know, and not, not to make this about a money talk or whatever, but it's kind of like, that is something to consider that like you can get one-on-one -on -one coaching for maybe half or more of the price of what Optavia is. And I understand that can be justified because it's part of your grocery bill, but right. it's like, wouldn't you rather have somebody who has a vested interest in your success, one-on-one -on -one connection, accountability, and also eating foods that you love and making them work into your plan. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So much better. Yeah. Yeah. It, I mean, so many people came to me. I just want something that's easy. And I know that you've heard this before too. Like how, how do we make this easy? A lot of people came into Optavia because they don't want to think about their diet. Yeah. But then you don't learn anything, mm -hmm. right? The same as buying a meal plan, the same as um, somebody doing all the work for you. What do you do after? What do you do exactly. if you don't like the meal plan? What if, what do you do? And, and COVID made Optavia very difficult because I think we went from 36 fuelings to nine. Oh, because, wow. You know, production issues and things like that. And we were telling people like, oh, you can still do the program with nine fuelings. Uh -huh. I mean, <laughs> wow. <laughs> and wasn't it too, with the fuelings when we're talking about processed foods, like you could pick whichever ones you wanted, right? So you yes. technically could eat five brownies or whatever that brownie mix yes. is or five cereal packets a day. And then yes. you're lean and green meal, right? Yep. Right. Because they're all basically the same. Yeah, the, the content, the amount, the protein amount, I will give them credit that there's some protein focus for sure. I think that's the thing is the ease of it obviously is attractive, the community and encouragement or whatever, if you get, if you do well in large group coaching settings right. is great, but ultimately what's going to help you be successful long-term. Um, yeah. I think the biggest thing that, that bothers me, which is why I was just wanting to take a stand or to ask somebody who'd been in the trenches is just really how it affects your metabolism. So, you know, I just, it's, and it takes a while to repair it too. And that's the other thing that us coaches have to try to help people with is how to repair exactly. it. Exactly. And, oh, I remember what I was going to say is I, so I, I started, you know, and I had a pretty big following because I coached a lot of people with Optavia. So when I posted onto my Facebook page that what I was doing, a lot of people came to me and a lot of those people were previous Optavia clients. And what I found is I will never take an Optavia client again because they can't get out of that mindset. Mm -hmm. That mindset of I can only eat this much food mm -hmm. is almost impossible to get them out of. They, they cannot... I'm working with someone right now. She was an Optavia coach for 10 years. She was eating a thousand calories for 10 years. And she's gained like 40 pounds oh. because I'm sure she's eating a thousand calories for four days and then eating probably two or 3000 calories on the other three days, you know, because it's unsustainable. And I, for the love of everything, cannot convince her to even eat 1500 calories. 
because she's just like, oh, I'm so fat. I'm so bloated. I just, my pants don't fit. Oh, that is so heartbreaking. Like it's just heartbreaking. Cause I think the common thing that we have been seeing with our clients is in some situations, at some point they ate enough food and drank enough alcohol to gain weight. And then they've been chasing the diet ever since. So the calories and activity and habits are really inconsistent. So we're trying to get consistencies there. And the biggest thing is that people are under eating as a whole. Yes. So I can't imagine, like, I, usually I'm trying to reverse diet people from around that 1500 ish mark or whatever. I can only imagine imagine the 800 to a thousand mark to kind of build up and know that a little fluff is going to happen with carbohydrate increase. And like, um, that I can see why you've set some boundaries there for yourself, which, which is what we have to do as coaches. We have to figure out who is the people that we want to serve and help. And, um, it's sad to hear that people who've been stuck in that for so long have trouble breaking free. And that's the thing is like, do you want to struggle with this for the next 10 plus years of your life? Or do you want freedom? Like, <laughs> freedom. 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 Yeah. Because I mean, what I learned, because I think I came in, I uh, started working with Mike Milner's uh, fiance, actually, yeah. is who I work with. Yeah. And um, I think I was eating about 1500 calories, because I still kind of had that opt to be a mindset. And I came in, I was eating about 1500 calories. And she said, Okay, Lois, we're gonna you, you're gonna eat 2200. And we'll, we'll get there slowly, you know, like we'll work up to it. Yep. And like, I got to about 1800. And I'm like, I feel good. <laughs> Like, this is amazing. I can have avocados and like ice cream if I wanted, and I don't have to feel bad. And then 2200 felt like hard. But then when she took me back down to 1800, when it was time for my deficit, I was like, oh, 2200. So <laughs> I can so relate to that. When you start to build to maintenance and then you are ready for a cut phase, holy moly, you do. It, there is a little bit of pain there, right? Because you're finally used to that, you know, cal and that's the thing is they promote too, like get in, get out. Let's be intentional. Let's do this. It's how you're going to survive it and let's get out of it. And that's really how the dieting should be because we're going to live in maintenance most of the time anyways. Um, and then of course your maintenance will adjust as you obviously lose a little bit of weight or a little bit of fluff. So, oh, that's, I'm so glad you touched on that. Well, yeah. I, my other question would be like with your coaching now that you do, like, how is that experience going from coaching in the opt to be a world to now your own thing? Oh my gosh. I'm so happy. I can't even tell you because I get to really talk to people about what it is that they want, um, where it is that they want to go. And then just being really honest with them about the whole process. I feel like there was always a little bit of cover up with Optavia, right? Just not necessarily intentionally, but I was very watched is what I'll say. Um, because they call you a coach. They say you own your own business, but you do not own your own business, right? Like you are being paid by another company. So you do not own your own business. And so they get to tell you what you can and cannot do. So I was told several times that I had to take down a post. I had to take down photos. I couldn't say X, Y, Z. Um, so there was not a lot of freedom for me. I didn't feel, and maybe, I don't know. When I started, there were 5,000 people at their yearly convention, and that was the biggest convention they had ever had. And last year's convention was 75,000 coaches. Holy crap. That's how big this company is getting. This is how many people are like seeking after just a quick fix. Mm. Um, mm. So I love owning my own company. I have two employees. I, you know, like... I grew so fast, thankfully, you know, that I couldn't handle all my people, <laughs> That's amazing. Um, but just to have that autonomy, but, and to really, really, you know, talk to people and help them build these habits that they can have for a lifetime. And then to tell them like, I, I'm going to miss you. I'm going to love you at the end, but you are not going to need me anymore. And so there's going to come a time when we are going to say goodbye to each other, you know, mm -hmm. And I love that too, because there should be a time. I'm just going to tell my coach, my own coach tomorrow. It's been 16 months. I'm up to my maintenance level after a cut. And I'm going to tell her like, I've had the best time and I'm going to miss talking to you every week, but I think I'm done. <laughs> yes. Yes. That is the, having clients graduate from your program with success and, and 
you know, it's, it's, it's the most rewarding thing I think as coaches and to see small wins along the way and people having these epiphanies and getting maybe a part of that. Like I've just been blessed with like the friendships that have gotten tighter because of that. But I also agree, like I make sure that they know, like, look, there is an end date unless you want personal training, you know, ongoing, like, yeah. yes, we have, there is a window of time that you're committing to us. So the investment is worth it. Cause it's not forever. The whole goal is to make you be independent on your own and know exactly what to do for the rest of your life and to live your life. I love exactly. that. Which I think is such a beautiful thing, right? That we as coaches can be confident to say, I held your hand for six months or 12 months. And you literally like, you know, everything you need to know. You're great. Yep. And Optivia never did that. And no fad diet is ever going to do that because they do need you to keep coming back. I think Weight Watchers like they pride themselves. Like people come back to us an average of six times. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, that is a horrible statistic, actually. I mean, it sucks. <laughs> yeah. And because they're, especially with Optivia and the low, low, low calories, when people would come back, like they do the diet, they lose their weight six months, a year, two months later, Lois, I gained it all back. And they, they have a much harder time losing that second time. They're like, I don't know why I can't do it. I'm not as committed. The weight isn't coming off. They're not seeing that huge. The first week when you lose five to eight pounds, they're not seeing that. Um, and they don't know why. And they yeah. think the problem is them. Yeah. Not and that's where that problem was. Like, that's what we alluded to just for people who are learning, like your basal metabolic rate is changing and it's adjusting, it's adapting, it's trying to keep your body alive. Like Mike Milner says, keeps the light, keep the lights on. You've got the minimum amount you need for lights on, but the more that you stick in these deficits and push your body to those limits to try to survive on, like not even a toddler should be eating that much for Pete's sake. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's ridiculous. Like that your dogs might eat more than that in some cases, you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, but it's, you know, it's one of those things where it's literally affecting your body and your body has to recover from something like yeah. that. That's why I, actually that's why lost I, my, I lost my period for like two years. I thought I was in menopause. I started eating more and my period came back, wow. <laughs> but I wow. was, I was just like way, way underweight from eating those low calories consistently year after year after year, yep. had a horrible mindset, shame and guilt. And how can I be a coach if I'm eating all these chocolate chip cookies, you know, mm. and yeah. just being able to be free of all that from both a client perspective and a coach perspective is really, it's amazing. That is amazing. Well, I want to stick with you, connect with you after I stop the recording, but do you have any like last thoughts for people who have maybe heard this for the first time or have been thinking about joining a program like that? I mean, first off, I want to say is we can't stop you from trying it. Sometimes people have to try things to figure things out. And believe me, I've tried 7 million things. That's why I feel like I can be a good resource for people. Be like, oh, I've tried. the only two diets I haven't tried are, is I haven't gone fully vegan and I haven't gone the opposite with fully carnivore, right? <laughs> but I've done everything else in between. <laughs> So any like lasting thoughts for people out there as they're considering which diet plans they want to do in 2023? Yeah, I would just say like anything that's promising fast weight loss, weight loss and fat loss are not the same thing. Weight losses can be fast. Like literally you could lose 10 pounds this week by eating 500 calories and drinking water. You could do it. Um, it would all come back on as soon as you started eating. So fat loss takes time and being committed to a process instead of trying to just fit into a bathing suit or feel better in pictures is it's not worth it because you're really lengthening your timeline. You think you're shortening it, but you're lengthening it because everything you do that's fast like that, just really just your metabolism takes just a huge toll and it's, it's going to take longer. So you're, you're two months on Optavia or any other super low calorie diet. You can add on, I would say at least two to four extra months onto your whole process beyond that, if you really are serious, then at some point. That's a great way to end. Cause I think one of the things we didn't highlight that just came to mind for me was like that weight loss, like you just said, is not necessarily just fat. It could be muscle, like precious muscle. And we know that as we're aging, we're already losing muscle and that's playing against us in longevity, our brain health, our ability to get past the age 60 and fall and not hurt ourselves. I mean, if anyone follows Dr. Gabriel Lyon, she's a great resource for protein and the importance of protein in our old age too. So great thing to mention that you're losing other things and taking, making your process even longer. Exactly. Good. Yep. 
Well, this has been such a fantastic conversation. So I'm going to stop the recording and you stay where you're at okay. there, but <laughs> we are so appreciative of you guys for watching this. If you have any comments or feedback. And like I said, if you're somebody who wants to defend the, and let's have a conversation on Optavia, I am open to conversations and dialogue in a healthy way. So thank you so much for watching this episode and I hope that you have a great day.